I think at this point it's fair to say that the Houston government is getting a good sense of the challenges involved in governing during a pandemic. And Taryn, perhaps as you've seen in your reporting recently, there's no better example of that right now than the decision to send kids back to school for in-person learning. Last week, kids went back into classrooms for the first time this year. And there was an abnormal number of absences across the province. And while we can't say exactly how many are due to illness or any other reason, I think it's fair to assume that there were some COVID infections in there since COVID is so widespread in Nova Scotia right now. And from talking to families, we know that some folks are just not sending their kids back because they're anxious about the possibility of COVID infection. Right, and they're not the only ones who are anxious. I think within the Premier's office, there's a bit of anxiety because there's a political calculus with all these kinds of decisions. Uh, the government, uh, obviously, on the one hand, hearing from the experts saying that uh, the classroom is the best place for kids to be, uh, on the other hand, as you have rightly noted, there's a lot of anxiety uh, at home. Uh, either uh, they're worried about sending their kids to, to back into school uh, and bringing COVID home where there might be a vulnerable uh, senior or somebody else who's uh, perhaps immunocompromised. And then you have a whole uh, a swath of kids who uh, have health issues and their parents clearly don't want to send them back in the classroom. So the Houston government uh, hoping that they've hit uh, the majority view, which is they should be back in school. But while they've been clear about their point that classrooms are safe, they've not been clear in a lot of their other communications. It's been difficult to get the numbers on attendance to get a clear picture of what's going on in classrooms. And it's also been uh, difficult for the government to justify why they've discontinued contact tracing. The reason that they've given has not been satisfactory to a lot of families. With the return to school, we have not seen any operational interruptions in, in our schools. Uh, approximately 11% of teachers were absent, teachers and staff were absent yesterday. That puts a stress on, on the system, um, but it's manageable at this point. I think that serves to illustrate that even at the most difficult times, the best defense politically against outrage is to clearly explain why you're doing what you're doing. As you point out, John, you're not going to please everybody, especially on a subject like this. But the least you can do is make sure that people understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. And right now, I think it's fair to say that on the communication side, the government may not exactly be getting a passing grade.